Good morning to you all. I'm very glad to see there's so many people in the room. I'm going to give you a presentation by Crossing Fields for Joomla. My name is Marco Lynch. Uh, well, I'll start off with taking a picture of you because this is starting to be kind of tradition that I have to send proof that my kids that there's actually people willing to voluntarily <laughs> listen to me. <laughs> So that makes for a good uh, piece of proof. So, my name is Marco Dings. I'm, you can tweet me at mdings. I'm the project manager for Juma 4, our coming edition. And I'm the CEO of the video group. And I'm going to be talking to you about custom fields coming. Well, custom fields, maybe. So we haven't decided on the real name yet, is going to be extended from DB fields. Uh, it's contributed, uh, it's going to be contributed to the core by Alan Moritz, uh, who is from Switzerland. He's part of the Juno 4 architecture team. And uh, yeah, when PLP and all the members saw the code, they said, oh, yeah, that's really good. It's really taking advantage of what Joomla offers and it really is a nice way to add stuff. So, in effect, uh, there is no such thing as uh, custom fields for Joomla per se. We aim to be, uh, it to be included in uh, Joomla 3.6-ish. <laughs> uh, it's always very uh, challenging. But it will be based on and it's compatible with DP fields. So there's nothing holding you back in using it when you get home because you will be able to use it uh, when uh, and just migrate it over or have it handed over when 3.6 uh, comes out. As I said, it's distributed by Digital Degree, Alan Moritz, so he does, deserves a lot of credit for that. So, what you want from custom fields, what will be the benefits of having custom fields, you may or may not wonder. Well, I think we all face the fact that you create a website and you create articles and they have a certain style to them and, uh, for whatever corporate pages and blog posts and look really well when you deliver it and then the user comes in and then he starts adding content and in no time it looks like crap. Because this, on all weeks he'll do it this way, and on even weeks he'll do it the other way, and there's just no consistency to it. And more possibly, he'll continuously call you up and say, "I want to add this video, and I know it has to be the top right cross, but how did we do that again?" And then you might say, "Okay, we've got some documentation for that, but yeah, obviously he doesn't read that, so you end up doing it yourself." And custom fields can help you because they will add custom defined data elements that's a bit of a broad term uh, fields to content elements they from the get go extend users as we know them when you create a user you can add fields to them like an avatar image a postal code we'll got some examples you can extend articles and you can, uh, can extend modules add fields to them and the nice thing, you can uh, define a custom visualization of those fields. And you can determine where and how they are displayed. On top of that, custom fields is a system plugin and it will support components that are written to the Joomla standards. I'm not even going to try and elaborate on that, but. Uh, it will support that. So uh, if a component is compliant, you can add custom fields to that. So for example, if you have whatever, an event something system, and it would be compliant, then you'd have the custom fields available to you. So, so is this a CCK killer? Uh, yes and no. So I think it will restrict CCKs to what I think they're supposed to be for really complex stuff. This will take care of 90, 95% where, where the CCK is total overkill for what you want to do. 
Yeah, so is it a CCK killer? No, it has its limitations and you have to, uh, it doesn't have the ease of use of a CCK in some instances. So it will require some of your brain power and technical skills to do stuff. Don't take it for the power. So there, uh, CCK comes more into its benefits. <coughs> <laughs> so, what do you get when you use TP fields or the Joomla custom fields? Uh, for once, whatever you add, it's searchable. From the you do nothing about that. So, you, anything you add, enter in your search engine, uh, uh, search engine, you'll find you'll find the fields, you know, the content items uh, that have the fields. It's multilingual. And as I said, if uh, an extension behaves, it, it, you get it out of the box, but it has a relatively easy way of setting up your own extensions so that they can be extended by custom fields. But well, this is actually beyond the scope of this talk, so but just be aware that you can do that. Uh, and that's very powerful, because you can do your generic stuff, and then the user can add its stuff or his stuff on the fly, or you can just uh, have you have the stuff that he needs. So, why would you want to use them? Well, you can extend your content in a simple way by adding the fields. Yeah. You get to display your content consistently and customized. So, where you enter a URL or a video image, uh, you can make sure that in the output you or you let the user define the video, you let the user define uh, the date, the URL, the whatever. And in your output, you make sure that it always displays in the same way. So, for example, uh, so you can extend your user profile with whatever, an avatar, country, telephone number. So this is a snapshot of a really nice guy you know. So you have a Joomla media field, so you can upload your image from here and then have it inserted in there. You can have a drop down list on the country, a birthday, the phone number, so this one would then throw an error uh, message if you add numeric characters to it, uh, so that's the basic uh, Joomla field structure. This is something I think we all encounter quite often uh, where you just want to do that. And there's a number of extensions out there that do that, but yeah, well if it's in core, then it will be very nice. What it will not do at this moment is do conditional stuff. Say, if I say the country is Netherlands, then I'll just add a field that says eats X amount of stroke waffles a day or something. <laughs> and, well, just something. So that's not what it do. But maybe it will do that in the long term. Another cool thing that we use it for, for example, is that you can display user fields in an article. So fields that you have attached to the user in an article based on the author. So in this case, from our own website, when Ruth write, uh, has written an article, you have attached your image to a profile. So then in the article, we can automatically display the image of the author. Well, just let your imagination run wild of what you can do by mi mixing and matching that, but this is a cool thing, we think. So, whatever, what's in it for you? Yeah, whatever you like to add. Files, you can attach files to them, uh, giving you an easy or very basic document management system. Because on the article level, you can do all kinds of stuff with ACL to limit it, uh, Things like that. You could answer uh, ads, say, a YouTube video just by having a field that says YouTube ID. So that little code after the question mark that's like seven or eight uh, uh, digits. And the user paste that in, and then your layout, alternate layout, whatever, come to that. You can then build on that to create the iframe or whatever other. Uh, means of display you want to embed the video in the article or in the module or anywhere else. You can add URLs to then link to that image or something. You can even add 
MySQL code as part of the field to pull out something else from the database and have that displayed. <coughs> well, as to the characteristics, the fields at the moment they're similar to the basic fields from Duma. So we have a media field and it's for all intents and purposes it behaves the same. But at this moment, it's not extended from the standard Joomla media field. So it's, we kind of have two fields at the moment that has technical reasons that should go away when it's integrated. And uh, so it's uh, uh, at the moment still a bit difficult to add your own fields. Once we integrate it truly into core, uh, you may or may not know, but then you can add your own field types uh, to Joomla relatively easily, and then they also should be available uh, from within PP fields. Uh, it has a, well, flexible standard visualization using a backend uh, GUI, so there's, a, there's three, uh, basically three ways of visualizing, we'll come back to that. But that will be easy, but it's limited. Or you will do custom visualization using your templating skills. What kind of fields do we have at the moment? Well, it's quite a long list. Calendar, CAPTCHA, you can do checkboxes, you can do color, uh, your basic editor thing, email, an image, Different from, the, different from the media field and into journalist. Media field, an article, reference, radio button, SQL, phone number, text, text area, times on URL, user, user group, yes, no, DP, calendar, calendar. Quite a number of fields, and he's adding to them yeah, quite regularly. What's the difference between calendar and DP calendar? I know, I know what DP calendar is. Yeah, so calendar would be just a date, I think, because we're the date picker. Um, What's DP calendar there? Well, 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 the guy that made it uh, has his own company called Digital Peak. So DP Fields is the thing he's contributing. But I think what he's most known for is his group working on calendar extension that interfaces with Google Calendar, has his own calendar management stuff. Okay. DP Calendar. Uh, so, as for the installation, it's very basic. Uh, While well it's not in Joomla core, just get it from joomla.digitalpeak.com, download PP fields. It's a basic system plugin and an editor plugin, so it should be relatively easy to install. <coughs> what you then get is a number of options that you should be aware of. So, here you see supported context. So, as I mentioned already, we have support for basic contact, article, categories, and forms. Well, I just named the articles. Mm -hmm. uh, we do the users and modules. So if you don't want to confuse your user and don't want him to add stuff to modules, you can just delete the line here. Then the fields uh, will not show uh, in that piece of Content. Same way you can add additional uh, components or extensions there, and then uh, if they comply, uh, it will show the options to add fields there. An option to set the display, so where to render the content. Yeah. So default, if you don't want to do go into templating, there is three places. Uh, where you can have the content displayed. After the title, so you can add an author or an image or uh, something after the title, any text you want. You could have it displayed before the content. So if it's an article, it's just on top of the uh, article text. Or below, after the content. And then gives you already some flexibility. Well, the real power comes when you go into your own templating stuff. I can't read my slides from here, so that's pretty good. And what you then get is this. So if you look at the users, you get two extra 
items, fields, and field categories. Why are they at the top of the list? I have no clue. <laughs> but they have to be, maybe it's alphabetical. I have no clue. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, the F will be just before everything else. So, no, no. It's the fields definitions that actually hold your data. And then we have field categories that you can use to group fields. So don't mistake them for the normal categories. But as you will see later on, you can group your stuff so it's more, you've got more oversight. Um, <coughs> fields are displayed sequentially. So here you see the tab. <coughs> which is the field category, or in my case I call it personal, and then it just displays the list of extra fields I added. This is in the back end, and I uh, can change them to my heart's desire. So at the moment there's no conditional fields, so you can't do anything like, okay, if I select the country of the Netherlands, <coughs> and I'll add the amount of average amount of stroke bottles a week, or other relevant data. So you can have one tab uh, per field category. You will have one tab per field category. So you can have multiple. If multiple fields apply, they will appear in different tabs. The tab is named after the field category. And that will make you help and organize your data. So with fields that we want to display, we've organized them, but when will they be displayed? You don't suddenly so don't have uh, everything displayed on any page. So lo and behold, we have two mechanisms. You can select the categories where you want to display, so you can select multiple categories per field, and then you say, okay, I want this displayed on all, and on companies, that's in Dutch. Well, this is kind of a strange combination, of course, because it will overlap, but you get the gist that you can select multiple categories where it, it's to be displayed. If the category is not selected, it will not be displayed. Yes? Is that part of the article configuration? Uh, well, this will be in articles or in users or in modules. It will be in all, so you can select it. Uh, it's standard Joomla, so if any item should have a category, and it should have tags, but we'll come to. And then you can just say, 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 okay, I want this category only, uh, this image only displayed in articles that uh, are referred to biographies or, well, you make up your mind or company bio or something else. So if you have company information like an address, then you maybe display that in the profile section for the company, for the user, where they are. So multiple categories one and tags you can do the same thing so you can uh, have a display when a certain tag is set which also makes it very powerful in the combination so with these two elements you can just about have the content show up well anywhere and be very granular granular you know when we want to display them, now we want to address more detail where to display them. <coughs> we discussed the basic layout stuff that you can do through the GUI. <coughs> so again, yeah, you can say it's after the title, it's before the content, it's after the content. You can have a single, single dedicated article where you just insert fields into uh, the article context, or you can do advanced stuff. Okay, I'll just talk about that. Uh, so it's a bit difficult to see. So, but it comes with an XCD plugin. So you press that, you get a list of your fields. You just select the field, and uh, it's a bit hard to see, but it's better to see uh, this on the next line. It will insert it. So, insert field, I've seen. We'll open the list with the fields. 
And then if you select the field, the content date, for example, this is the field ID 9, it will insert this code, mustache, templating stuff. You could also type it by hand if you know it. Uh, but this is kind of easy. So you can, it's a field ID, you can display the value or you can display the title. So there are always two attributes to a field. And then you can insert those in your article and create a one of a kind. Might be useful, uh, but yeah, then you still uh, don't have the. It's good for one of the kinds. It's not when you want to repeat something. Yes? Do you use those fields in things like the registration emails and so on? I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but probably. Uh, I don't actually don't know how it works, but probably you could set up something that you use them in an article, mm -hmm. and then you include the article in the registration uh, email, and then you're all set up. Okay. Now, I personally think this is a bit cryptic and difficult to remember. So, in my opinion, if you, and it's a pull request I have to make to the code, because you can, instead of the ID, you can also use the alias, which makes more sense in a number of main, uh, ways uh, because of portability. Say you have a piece of code, an article, a layout, and you want to reuse that in a different place or on a different, or typically on a different website. And on that website, you create your fields in a slightly different order, or you delete one or add one. And then, uh, oops, you go because the field IDs will not be the same as on the previous site you have. So then you'll start cursing <laughs> and possibly remember that I told you so in this session, <laughs> and, and then go back and using the alias. So, alias avatar, and you should have the same thing. So, personally, I think it should be an option in the editor plugin. But lots of stuff that we can do and build on for something that's not even officially released. So, so is that valid at the moment, but it just doesn't work in the, the editors? Is that what you're saying? Or can you put that in? Yeah, you can put that in, but it's just that the editor plugin, okay. which allow, gives you the easy way to figure out what it is, okay. uses the ID instead of the alias. I already got this in, but yeah, you have to type it in. But once you get the gist of it, this is just as easy as uh, doing it uh, with the editor plugin. As I said, you can use the value or the title or some of our attributes. You can read about the documentation. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've got the fields in. You know when to display them. But yeah, for sure, you'll want the field to display different here, then, there, right here, there, or whatever that may be. Uh, so, what can you do? We've got some basic stuff that, it's all Joomla stuff, so I'm not going to go into that, that deep, but you can do your template overrides. So basically, in your template overrides, you change the default behavior of your content. It's typically used by, you need your templates to change the look and feel, so you could change those. Uh, yeah. See, some touch in there. <laughs> 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 now, you may or may not know, but the Joomla core actually has a nice system to add <coughs> template overrides. You can go into the back end, hit on the style button, and then you can see well, it's actually wider than this, but you can change the appearance of modules, components, all that kind of stuff. <coughs> uh, and if you click those buttons, then it will create the appropriate files for you. Because it will create you, if you want to do that by hand, you create your files in the template directory, template name, HTML, etc., etc. So you can do that right back. And so that's relatively easy. 
you get a copy of the files and then you go in and hack your way around changing it. So, um, but there's another way that works on server content and that's to add an alternate layout. Anybody not familiar with the term? So, you have a default behavior, and like for an article to display, you can add, let's put it very simple, that same set of files with another prefix. And now default, they are always prefix <coughs> with default underscore, and then you could add your own blah blah underscore or something, and that would then be the name of that alternate layout. So, when you then s select how an article is displayed, you can select from the drop down in the article manager that alternate layout and it will use that. So that allows you to diversify and have multiple ways an article is displayed. So it's a very powerful thing to do. Uh, there's no backend GUI for that. Uh, so that's a bit of a shame. So I'm considering trying to write a proposal for the Google Summer of Code for that. Uh, so that we can have some student in and maybe extend our backend uh, to help us with that. So it's something that you could use in addition to your template overrides. So it can be selected from the content in an article, uh, your menu definition. It's like, okay, I want this block displayed that way. You can also combine it with other stuff. And I particularly find this one very powerful, because if you look at the way that we can style blogs, uh, there's not really a way to style the articles within a blog uh, with an alternate layout, uh, because it's just not supported. It just doesn't work. Now there's this really uh, powerful extension that I would use for that, it, that's called Articles Anywhere. Uh, you can basically uh, create a blog layout, but the nice thing about that is that you can say articles. Now there's a plethora of ways of selecting your articles, but you could say category this, and then say I want all the articles uh, rendered using this layout. So now you've, or, and you just put that in a single article and reference that, and all of a sudden you've got a lot of ways of, and easy ways of rendering blog-like layouts or whatever, because you can just use an article to style what a single element should be, and then you're done. Now there's one caveat in that, is that Peter from Weston, Peter, um, decided uh, <coughs> we're not going to build in support for that until it's in beta. Uh, so you'll have to add a little bit of extra code to that here to uh, have articles anywhere, recognize the DP fields, well it's not a big deal. So you can have summarize that, you have blog layouts with uh, article alternate layouts. So what, what exactly you type this line? I would type it just inside an article and display the article. Inside the article. Yeah, and then the plugin will the no numbers plugin will render that as Sorry, are you saying that that line in one article will yes. affect many articles? No, I'm saying that that line in one article will produce a, can produce a blog-like layout or whatever oh. layout you want based on the number of articles you select here. You, so you can select random articles, you can select the first five, the last five. Oh, well, as so I said, if, that, if that article is in the first five or if that article is in the category companies, yeah, then, then it will be rendered and it will be rendered using this layout okay, thank you. and not the default layout. Okay. Still everybody with me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The next level of granulation that we have in Joomla is your J layouts. Who's not familiar with J layouts? It's not a shame. So J layouts were introduced some time ago to make sure that, for example, the way pagination shows on the page or the way uh, the title is displayed 
that used to be like all over the place and would be kind of the same code everywhere. Now GLAR is the next level of abstraction that in your template you can just say GLAR blah 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 title of an image. So you've got one place where all the titles of your site are rendered. You can override that, same way that you can do that with articles. And say, okay, I'll just make it something different. Remember the picture of Ruth where the image was on the left hand side? So you can do that with the title override for the articles. You just pull in the field, put the image to the left, and then everywhere where there's a title for an article, that will be used. Uh, so basically, uh, typically, uh, you will have your layout. You should have a look, tune my content. Uh, and for example, you can see all kinds of items. Uh, for example, the read more option, the way you read more is displayed on articles. So if you shouldn't edit this, don't do that, no point. Just copy it into the same structure under your template HTML, as you do with your overrides. And then uh, by convention, <coughs> Joomla will prefer that file to this file. And then you're home free because you can edit your stuff, add stuff without it being broken on an update. So we see. For the same goes for that you can have your custom layouts. For example, so the, the title of a blog is blog style default item title. Go figure. It's a bit of. Uh, go and find it, but then you can just style that in a different way. So now traditionally, for example, it's styled like the title of the, the item. But say if you have a directory of companies, and you add the, the company name and the company director and who knows what, then for the blog, you can, for that blog, you can just display the company name and the director's name and phone number as part of the blog title. Well, what you put there, it's up to you. But you can do many, many, many things. So I put some examples, the title, to change the way the pagination looks. If you don't like it, you can change the uh, read more. But you can also do the same thing for the fields. So it's, it's like Nested, nested. Now you can go further and further in changing your building blocks because the fields, the form fields, are themselves also J layouts. Uh, so, as I said, for the template, you would add into templates, template name, HTML, and then copy the file that you want under that structure. Yes? What kind of output will the fields have in terms of the HTML? So what you define it to be? But if you're if you're rendering them automatically um, using the plugin, on so at, at this point the plugin doesn't come into play anymore. Oh, okay. Uh, that's this is standard Joomla behavior. The plugin comes into play if you pull in DP fields in uh, the representation of that J layout. So in the end, it's what you want. Yes. So how do you call, in the template, say you've gone in and you've done an override, how would you call a specific field inside that? that oh, some examples, okay. okay. You could even have, I have to select this thing again, uh, different field representations, representations per component. So say you have a avatar field or an image field, you can have a, have a different layout for an article as for a user representation. That's all, that's, this is all standard stuff, uh, but you should be aware of that, that you can actually start looking for it, because you might not realize that you can do that. So or you, if you have a field that you can make it red in an article and make it green in a user, not that that's a particularly useful mm -hmm. example, but still, it's something that you could consider, or, well, we have all customers, so they'll come up with the silly things to <laughs> implement, but anyway. Okay, I'll give you a few code snippets, and then we'll have some time to answer. So, I have to complement the link, because I couldn't find it, so I have to ask Ruth. 
she's gonna win. So <laughs> I'll uh, add that in the final presentation. So say you want to, this example of getting an image into an article, because we figured that out, it wasn't actually that somebody tried before, uh, a few weeks back, so. But it's really basic, so you, in this case, you want to get the created user by, or created by, from the user. So you get the user, this item created by, so you get the user ID. Then you have to make that piece of content aware of the DP fields. So you trigger the on content prepare event for the com users. So be aware this is the context of the article. So and go back to the articles anywhere, then you can do the <coughs> same thing. You can trigger the content of the article. Say com users user and then get the fields of the user. And in this example, we just loop all the fields until we find the avatar, and then we save it, and do something with it later on. So that's all you need to add to a template override, ultimate layout, whatever, something, and you've got the article, uh, you've got the field. And then it's up to you what you do with it in your styling, whatever HTML you put around it, you can do conditional stuff. So at this level, you can start doing stuff like if the country is Holland, oh, not Holland, I will not display the number of soap waffles the guy eats, uh, eats normally. But it's not gooey like. But yeah, you can do just pretty much what you want. Uh, as I mentioned, the use of overrides. Uh, uh, of using ID uh, aliases instead of IDs, you can very easily do that with Swedable. So simply map them once at the beginning of your code. So for each DB fields, I just push the uh, alias as and map it to the ID. So I don't have to remember the ID in my piece of code. Because specifically, if you uh, have IDs, hard-coded IDs, and pieces of code that you may want to reuse. Uh, well, the, the ID won't work, but if you standardize yourself on using the alias of an avatar, then you can reuse these snippets of code. Mm -hmm. And then you can do stuff like this. So the uh, you'll uh, in this case I have a contact details array. Uh, it was an example where I had. Uh, two sets of contacts uh, details displayed in the same category block. So I decided, okay, I'll put them into it uh, in an array. So one for the header from the name of the email. Uh, I get the DP field, so that's this part. I put in the ID, which is a bit longer because now you put in the alias. I get the label and I get the value of stuff. Get the email address. And in this case, I just call a layout, JLayout of myself, to render that company contact details. So <coughs> you that you can do stuff like that so that you don't start uh, end up repeating the same piece of styling twice in your template override, because that just doesn't make sense and it will come and bite you in the end. That would pretty much end my presentation. I think I've got five minutes uh, for questions, so I think I've done it rather nicely. Yep. Questions taken? <coughs> I'll start off. Okay. Uh, I've got a series of articles that are events for a local society. Yeah. Oh, can I add a date field? which is the significant date of the... Yes, you can add a date field, you can add a location field for the map, right. you can whatever. That's the answer I was expecting. Can I sort by that date field, rather sure. than by article creation date, article publish date, alphabetically? Yeah, so if you uh, use something like uh, articles anywhere, will have allow some sort of sorting, but you can, you could also write your own plugin where you just in your own articles and then sort them on the field that you, uh, so load your articles, get all the date fields, sort them in the code the way that you want them and then output them the way that you want it. So yeah, it will require a bit of coding, but yeah, you, you can do 
basically everything. You so do a plugin on. You don't even need to do a plugin. It, you can do it all in the uh, all the layout file. That's where I do. It. Okay, thank you. Yep. Yes. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Uh, <laughs> Gilda currently has the user uh, profile plugin. Yes. Uh, which is a way of extending your user registration yes. with custom fields. Yes. And you can take that plugin and add your custom fields. Yes. Again. So how does fit or how this uh, new GA custom fields thing fit into the user plugin? plugin? It will make it obsolete. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, so that's we, we a much more rigid way of doing stuff because if you want to add fields to there, then you have to edit an XML <laughs> file. And, uh, and it we, we also have a, a table in the database which is a user profile, yeah. which uh, uh, stores all that information. Uh, have you planned a migration for that when this mm, is in place? Or no, but I would. Because the difficult thing, in, I don't, one, I don't think it's difficult. But uh, technically, to map the database uh, fields, but the problem will be that you don't know upfront how people will call their user fields in their own plugin because they might not like the names that uh, they have in the uh, user profile plugin, or they might have altered uh, the user profile plugin uh, from the get go. So I think uh, there will just be a no-go in trying to do that. We <coughs> might publish some uh, generic way of saying, okay, you have to map, this is the way you, how you map uh, an existing field and you can populate uh, uh, the models. But yeah, this is much more powerful than the, the old one. Okay, and that's the last one. <laughs> uh, so uh, although it will be obsolete, there will be some kind of legacy system in place so that you can keep using your user profiles? Oh, you can keep, uh, this does not conflict with user profiles. I would just, so you right. they we can coexist, but you don't have the flexibility with the user profiles as you have with uh, custom fields. We, we don't need the user profile table anymore. Then yeah, correct. That's why then. Yeah, but I don't think it's the installed by default. I think you have to install it. Uh, uh, so, in fact, it's not really a call, it's more like an example of how you can do stuff, and it's used yeah, for No, it's not. No, I, I'm corrected by the, the table is, is already in the database, okay. and the plan is there is disabled because it's more of an example, mm -hmm. as you say, but the table is in, it's in place. Okay. <coughs> uh, yeah? Um, so, this is good with the human search. Yes, that's what I said. So, any field is uh, searchable <coughs> of that will be indexed. George? Uh, okay. Uh, how, if this thing makes it into core, does that mean that anything that's currently using DP fields is going to, how are you going to migrate that data? That will be provided, I don't know, uh, but it will be an automatic procedure to move from DP fields to the core. That's been committed to be done. <coughs> and what is about the performance, because you saw in your example that you're loading Article then for article loading user and then if you are user writing dispatcher a lot of plugins and possibly the user will have more than one plugin so it's like a lot of queries and display just one avatar. Uh, have you? Uh, it will depend on what you uh, actually so do in these. So no, no, I've, we've not seen real performance issues. He's using the same mechanism. Uh, with this DB calendar extension, uh, which is used extensively, and I've not seen any complaints. So last question, because Prime was sick, so that I should shut up. There was a question in the back. We use an uh, extension called Fields Attach. Yeah. It's uh, obviously not going to be in the Jira core if this is. Yeah. So should I be thinking about migrating from it to this, or should I? The Pants Fields Attach is more GUI-like, has more features to do stuff in a GUI way. So if that's your thing, stick to it. Uh, we have so many people who have the need for this kind of stuff out of core, and it offers more than uh, fields attached in that way. So yeah, well, you're, you're the one to decide. I'm not the one to say you should use that. 
Yeah, then I would suggest uh, look at uh, migrating. Yes. Last are question. Any, are there any plans to release uh, modules, improved modules that can access some of the fields that you've created? That is supported already. That's already in there. Yeah, so it supports modules, fields, and so in a module I can access the field of the currently logged in user or whatever you can think of. And one last, last question. Uh, where do you store uh, this information? If you have, let's say, 50 fields, you store it inside the article? In, no, no, it's a separate table. Uh, separate table? So, yeah, you just have to look it up. Uh, I think it's beyond the scope. Okay, sorry guys, I have to leave it uh, at this because otherwise Brian will kick me in, uh, well, do something. <laughs>